So we're looking now um, from the Peace Island uh, on Jordanian territory on to the other side. Um, and you can see the flags there of the two countries. That's the bridge we crossed. And here. Um, these are the dams of the Rotenberg power plant. And here is where the uh, peace treaty was signed in October 1994. Okay. Here, in the island? The ceremony. Uh -huh. And it was declared an island for uh, agricultural um, reasons? That's the border post. As part of the agreement, the kibbutz was allowed to cultivate, continue to cultivate this area, even though it's Jordanian sovereign territory. It was a very unique, special status created in the peace treaty. Okay. And I just have to add more uh, words to the horrible state of the Jordan River. Yes. 1.3 billion cubic meters of water used to flow from the Kinneret, the Sea of Galilee, mm -hmm. joined with the Yarmouk, and gush, this is the entire floodplain of the Jordan. Oh. As you can see, it's nearly dry. In, in recent tests, we saw just 20 to 30 million cubic meters of water. That's a reduction of over 98% of the flow. So wow. what we have is nearly dry, and downstream it's actually much worse. Okay. So that's the situation of the Jordan. Oh my lord. So in Africa. Oh yes, and, and so of course we're in the, the center of the Syrian-African rift. Oh yes, rift. okay. Yes, the Great Rift Valley. And, and that's also been proposed as a, a large uh, okay. a transboundary right. conservation zone. So this is zone. the center of the transboundary, the proposed Jordan River Peace Park. What we are proposing is that the area of the Peace Park actually go up to Road 90, mm -hmm. there where you see the, the cars. It would continue up. Narayim, where we entered, is the northernest section. Mm -hmm. And once we, we go over that side, you'll see all of Bakura, which is this beautiful, very much well-preserved nature area on the Jordanian side, which is because it's a closed military zone, it's very well preserved. Lake used yeah. to be. So what we're looking at is the bottom of the lake here. It's, it's all the way up into that hill there. This photograph is from when? Like 1930. <laughs> the Yarmouk is coming from this side uh, on the Syrian Jordan border and coming down the hill uh, here from the Gilad. Uh, mountains. It comes around those trees and comes and you know, uh, goes down. Now Rutenberg actually opens the river with Rutenberg created this dam which stopped the Yarmouk flow. Yes, I don't see the river here. No, no, I don't see the river here. To control the flow, to redirect it into the lake. The lake. You can see the yellow uh, okay. tower of the Jordanian po. army there. Po enda, okay. Okay. Here is the dam, which we're looking at yeah. right here. And we take the water from the Jordan, and we don't see the water. Here is the water. Ah, here is the water. The Jordan comes from the Kinneret, it goes to the Melech. Standing on is the center of one of the largest migratory flyways in the world. 500 million birds from around the, all of Europe on their way to uh, Africa during the winters. And they're flying through this area. There were two historical wetlands, one at the base of uh, the Sea of Galilee and another at the, near the mouth of the Dead Sea. These wetlands no longer exist. We'd like to give the birds a home again by flooding this, uh, this lake bed with a shallow level of water so that we can minimize the amount of water needed, but we can create a habitat that will bring thousands of tourists to visit this area. Mm. All right, so here with the historic Rotenberg uh, power plant behind us, we can see this historic picture from 1932 when Pinkas Rotenberg, together with King Abdullah I, opened up the power plant for, mm. to send electricity to uh, pre-state Palestine and Jordan. A and very who are these other people in the background? Well, we have some dignitaries from all over Jordan and the Jewish communities in the na neighborhoods, as well as some of the workers that uh, helped build this incredible, really unique power plant, the first of its kind in this region. Okay, so. so the Hejaz uh, train station went indeed from Damascus to Mecca, picking up you know, thousands of pilgrims from all over the Middle East to travel the line. And the, and Abdul Sultan II was the uh, big uh, idea behind the Hijazi network. 
bringing these, to, and they, in order to build it, they needed the steel, the wood, the materials, and they, to do that, they needed to create a, either Beirut or Haifa to bring the raw materials to create the, the huge mm -hmm. endeavor. They had German engineers behind the project, and they brought the steel and the, and the wood from Haifa across the Emek through the Mandate uh, period Palestine, over this valley and onwards uh, to Jordan. There you go. Okay, so this is a memorial site to seven young Israeli girls who are visiting the site the year after the peace treaty. Eighth grade. Um, and they came and a Jordanian soldier opened fire on their group, uh, killing seven of them and uh, striking fear into the entire group. And this is a memorial site that uh, a local kibbutz woman from Ashtosh Yaakov maintains in their memory. And as you can see, each of the hill sites is a memorial to one of the girls with their name on it, spelled out in flowers. Oh. What she's doing is so special. This was part of the Via Maris, mm. the uh, Roman road that went along the sea and cut along. Uh, this was the Roman bridge that crossed over the Jordan. Oh. It's one of the oldest symbols of uh, crossing over the Jordan. Hijaz, this is the Ottoman bridge. Okay. And we have here three bridges, the Ottoman bridge, 1904, the British Bridge here, which is the concrete one, which was the first to fall apart, <laughs> and the Roman Bridge uh, of the like more traditional Roman arches. We have pointed Mamlukian arches. So this Without is a visa, amazing accomplishment. <laughs>